As a starting point, it's probably useful to understand how CADNATO's reduced representations relate to more familiar models of DNA. So here's a 22 base stretch of DNA, and let's just call the scaffold strand white and the staple strand purple. And every seventh base of the staple strand is colored yellow. So the staple strand runs from 5 prime to 3 prime in the positive z direction. And now we often think about DNA both from the side and also from the end. So when we're looking down the end of the helices, we think of the x-axis as going left to right, and the y-axis is going top to bottom. We've also fixed the angles of the helices um, in a specific way. So if this is 0 degrees, then base 0 is at 330. So walking plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 bases away brings us to 90 degrees or minus 240 from 330. Going another 7 bases further is another 240 degrees bringing you to 210. So when the staple strand is going 5 prime to 3 prime in the positive z direction, these three angles are the only crossover positions we typically use. We'll just represent um, possible staple crossover positions with arrows like these. So we've looked at staple strands going in the positive z direction. What about strands that run anti-parallel in the negative z direction? Well, it turns out that you can flip the strand over so it points the other direction. You get bases that line up for possible crossovers at ang angles that are complementary to the first strand. So here we're looking at the left strand, which runs 5 prime to 3 prime in the positive z direction, and it has bases that line up with the returning strand in the minus z direction. Let's take a look at a reduced representation of what I just showed. Again, at position 0, there's a potential crossover between these two helices. If we move 7 bases in the positive z direction, we see there are two more potential crossover positions. If we move another 7 bases in the positive z direction, we are now 14 bases away from where we started, and we have a third pair of possible crossover positions. Finally, at 21 bases away, we have completed two turns of DNA along each helix, and we are back to where an angle where we started. Of course, we're not limited to only two helices. We can expand this pattern a bit in the x and y directions. Again, if we look at individual slices that run parallel to the xy plane, we can see that where potential staple crossovers can go between neighboring helices. At every slice positioned at 0 plus 21 times n bases, we have potential crossovers at this angle shown here. At each slice at 7 plus 21 times n bases, we have potential staple crossovers going up and down, and the third set of possible staple crossovers is at 14 plus 21 times n bases. Depending on how much scaffold you have, you can expand pretty far in the x, y, and z directions, and you can imagine trying to approximate a, a wide variety of shapes. Now I'm going to try to explain how this honeycomb framework of crossover patterns relates to how we design shapes. We typically work with two views of the structure an end view of the helices, and an unrolled side view. We first figure out a route for the long, single-stranded scaffold that traverses all the helices. Once we have this scaffold route, we design a set of complementary staple sequences. When parallel helices are adjacent in three dimensions, we connect them with staple crossovers in the unrolled schematic as well. Now let's see how the left-hand cross-section view relates to the staple crossover rules I explained earlier. Okay, so this orange bar is at position 0. If we advance it to position 21, we have our first set of potential staple crossover positions in the design. None of these positions are included, but they were technically allowed. Advancing another two helical turns to position 42, we have the same set of crossover positions. As you can see, we are actually using them for the center row of helices. If we shift everything down by 7 bases, recall that we get another set of potential crossovers. At position 28, we can see we have 
crossovers connecting the orange and white layers of helices, as well as those connecting the white and blue layers. And we have a similar set of crossovers another 21 bases away. Finally, if we shift down another 7 bases, um, or 120 degrees from the zero position, um, we have a final set of potential crossovers. Here you can see this design includes these crossovers in the orange and blue layers at position 35, but not at position 56. So why didn't we include the staple crossovers in the middle layer, for example, at this position? There could have been a cr staple crossover from here to here. Well, we already have a scaffold crossover between the same two helices only five bases away at this position. We want to avoid kinetic traps that might occur if you space scaffold and staple crossovers so close together, so we've omitted the nearby staple crossover in this position. To recap, let's step through the entire design seven bases at a time so you can see the crossover positions as they repeat next to each other. So here's position plus 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, and 56. So in the next tutorial, I'll introduce the CAD Nano interface and demonstrate how to build an actual shape from start to finish.